In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$3 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment. Reduce your payments by 30 to 50% and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Get ready to fight from within. You're about to go behind enemy lines. Roger, 3-2. Goliath copies all. Go ahead. The target is surrounded by multiple firms uh, entering what appears to be a residential area. Uh, requesting permission to engage you. From the People's Republic of New York City, you're now going behind enemy lines with Gene Baradelli and Russ Gallo. Or now, behind enemy lines. Hey there, how you doing, America? Gene Berardelli, Russ Gallo here with you on another, actually quite warm October evening here in the People's Republic of New York. How you doing, pal? Oh my God, Al Gore might have been right. <laughs> it, it's been quite a week so far here in the People's Republic of New York with uh, the, the weather just warming up like it was, uh, you know, mid-August right now. I think they said it's the hottest day on record since like the last hottest day on record, 1890. Um, what made it that hot then? All right, let's move on. Yes, well, gee. Dummies. <laughs> anyway, listen, we got a great show for you this evening. It's going to be basically me and Russ talking about Hillary's leaking wiki. Well, that sounds dirty. Oh, no. Yeah, what is Wait, that? Yeah. Well, have anything to do with her relationship with Uma? You know, we, we, we should... Oh, man. <laughs> do I have to come out of the box? Can you tell it's been two weeks since we've done the show? Uh, by the way... Do I have to come right out of the box with that? Uh, no Wow. Wow, is all I have to say. You've been waiting a while to unleash that one, didn't you? Listen, I don't want to say the National Enquirer is scooping me. You know what? Before we get to the real substantive political <laughs> news... This is substantive. Well, I mean, listen, we, we've had TMZ weigh in, and we've had the National Enquirer weigh in on a whole bunch of things lately. Let's. National Enquirer says they have a source talking about Hillary... I, I can't believe we're even giving credence to the National Enquirer. Before you go any further... What kind of cycle has this been? Before you go any further, oh, I do believe it was the National Enquirer that broke the John Edwards love child story. They also had a, another story earlier in the cycle, didn't they, with uh, with Donald Trump? I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. But, yeah, this is the the level that we have now lowered ourselves to on but the how show. how sad is it that you need to turn to... Uh, Quasi news outlets like the National Enquirer to get any stories. You're being very kind in saying that, by the way. Any stories relating to Democratic candidates for president. You're telling me no one knew about John Edwards until the National Enquirer broke that. You're telling me nobody knew that Hillary Clinton is a lesbian until the National Enquirer broke that. You're trying to tell me nobody. I knew, knew by the you're way. Trying to tell me nobody knew about Shepard Smith before. Oh wait, it wasn't National Enquirer. But what I Shepard Smith story. He finally came out. I mean, the the worst kept secret in journalism. Finally came out. Where where have you wait, been? Wait, 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 wait. That wait, root wait. canal really got to you. What 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 is this about Shep? He he came out as being homosexual. You're lying. No, you don't you didn't know about this? Where is this? Where's your it's, sources? It's all over the news, my friend. How am I not seeing this? Not that it's anything really, but 
No, but I mean, I actually saw Shep uh, in person once, and he wears an insane amount of makeup. I mean, more than your average TV personality. Really? Much more so. And it was in the street, so it was kind of crazy. Well, maybe he was jumping out for a second, I don't know, for a quick bite, something like that, right? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, listen, back to the National Enquirer, you know, the important stuff. Yes. Uh, story on their cover this week, claiming that anonymous sources has all this dirt on Hillary, including escapades with the opposite sex. Well, the same sex. No, I was more shocked about the opposite sex ones with her. <laughs> you, you see, I totally deadpanned that one. You didn't even think it was a joke. So was Bill. Bill, Bill's Bill shocked was shocked things. as well. Bill didn't know what was going on. Same sex relationships, opposite sex relationships. Just the idea of sex and Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah, man. Get that visual out of your head, folks. Her thighness. Oh, my goodness. Madam Kankle. <laughs> Stop. It's it's enough. It's just enough. Listen, folks, if you, if you don't want any of this nonsense on your TV or your radio, it's going to be a rough 21 days or whatever it is that when you're listening to the show for you because it's going to get worse before it gets better. So will Hillary Clinton make any appearances, including the debate? I actually was wrong on something, Gene. This you were wrong, yeah. I, I was about to say, it's been a couple of weeks since we said, but Russ Gallup was wrong. I predicted when it that came to Hillary the would not show up for the debates and... I'm prepared to double down on that bet, if anybody will take me up, that I suspect that either Hillary Clinton has died... What? ...or will not come to the no, no, for some other reason. Oh, come on. Where now. has she been, Gene, for the past three or four She's been days? resting. Resting? I think she died. Listen, it's a tradition in every election cycle for the presidency of the United States that when you get within the last 30 days... That everybody, it's mandatory. You slow down and you take a break because there's nothing really important happening in the last 30 days of a campaign. Oh wait, that's probably the most important part of a campaign. I was gonna say, Gene, where did you go to political school? Well, I, I am a I am a Brooklyn Republican, so you know. Well, we rest all the time. Yes, well, <laughs> rest, turn over, turn Democrat, act like Democrats. You know, whatever. I mean, in all seriousness, I don't see. Uh, you know, I don't see any rational excuse for Hillary Clinton not being anywhere to be seen in these last days leading up into the last debate and into the election itself. Um, if you believe these whacked out polls, you're insane. Because there's anywhere between Trump is up two to Trump is down 11. Yeah, can we, let's, let's bring it back to what we were originally talking about with the whole WikiLeaks situation and, and emails from John Podesta getting out there. One of those emails, or a group of them, I should say, discussed before the campaign rolled out, how the Clinton campaign was reaching out to reporters to having them come over, enjoy a meal, enjoy drinks together, festivities, before the campaign rolled out, to kind of ingratiate themselves to uh, the campaign and, and have them, you know, check on each other and all these things. Further, there were emails, especially from, from Glenn Thrush of Politico, going back and forth, checking with the campaign if, if stories were okay. I mean, we've talked about it all the time about media hypocrisy. The one with Politico is even deeper, where Podesta, uh, Politico ran something by the Hillary campaign, and Podesta in particular, asking him if he wanted to edit an article. That How crazy is that? I mean, what kind of... Even a website with some semblance of, of but journalistic we've, But we've integrity. been nuts for the past five years talking about yeah. this. And and I know we want to talk about him a little bit, but we could drag him in right now. James O'Keefe, our pal... Yes. Tremendous work over at Project Veritas. Um, I really don't understand how this is not front page news on every, every newspaper and leading every, um, you know, media outlet on television, on, on the network news, with what he's uncovered. He's uncovered DNC staffers and Hillary Clinton campaign staffers talking on hidden camera about breaking the law and colluding between super PACs, the DNC, and the Clinton campaign. This is earth shattering. You'd think it would be, but who's paying attention to not. it, Russ? Who cares? But you know why Nobody it's not? Cares. Because those same media types that we were just talking about are burying the lead. And in the O'Keefe piece, he also talks, he also shows these people saying it in their own words, how all of the big, uh, all the brouhaha at all these Trump rallies were planted protesters, paid for by either the DNC, a consultant working for the DNC, or the Clinton campaign, or Super PAC, or some combination thereof, to rile up Trump supporters and get them into arguments and fights. Which is, which is what Russ Gallo actually was talking about on a, on a previous show. By the way, I don't know if you remember this, Russ, but back when we had uh, James on the show in April, he kind of hinted that something big like this was coming down the pipe. He did. And, he when, his word. and one of the things that we talked about off air was uh, in Brooklyn, in campaigns in Brooklyn regularly, we saw Democrats actually bussing in 
voters to go to the polls and then taking them home. Uh, it was part of the discussion that we had with James. So maybe, just a little bit, maybe we put him onto something when, when we discussed that with him. I, by no means are we taking any credit whatsoever. No. For whatever James O'Keefe did. But hopefully we planted a seed, or maybe the seed was already there and he was just confirming just by talking to us about it. Uh, but in any event, wow. And if you don't know what we're talking about, I, I highly Go to Project Veritas. Go and watch the video. It's like the one you put up the other day was 16 minutes long. Um, your blood will boil when you see this thing. When, when people are saying Trump is whining and complaining, and President Obama is jackass, uh, actually said that Trump is whining about the media and un- unfair coverage and a rigged system. The system is rigged, folks. Donald Trump nailed it. And let's be clear. When we're talking about the system, we're not just talking about the process of voting. Which that's rigged as well. And we can can tell you tons of stories about that. Happened to Rush Gallo. Uh, But not for nothing, we're talking about the system, the political system, the incestuous relationship between politics and media. The incestuous relationship between the parties sometimes. Establishment against uh, grassroots. It's it's a rigged system in favor of those who are already in power. And when you talk about the establishment against grassroots, look at the amount of money between the super PACs and the campaigns that and the DNC and RNC that's being spent. The left is outspending the right astronomically in this cycle. Astronomically. So who would you argue is the grassroots? It's it's the Donald Trump people. It's the deplorables. Which I got a great T-shirt from Less Government More Fun. Absolutely, it was a great T-shirt. Go to lessgovernmorefun.com, folks. Uh, one of our sponsors here on the show. Uh, you'll hear their ad as well during the show. But they sent us a couple of T-shirts. One, the best one. I'm wearing the the Less Hillary More Fun shirt. Russ is wearing the Deplorable shirt. Check out our Twitters, and you can uh, check out the photos of us wearing the gear today. Great stuff from them. Great oh, stuff. Awesome stuff. Unbelievable stuff. I love it. I, I just hope I don't get jumped in the streets for wearing it out here. Oh, especially around here. In the People's Republic. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the incestuous relationship that we were talking about, the, the, the rigged system. Yeah, oh, Monmouth, going back to the Monmouth polling, for God's sakes. Almost basically rigging their polling to come out in favor of Hillary. I think most of these polls are rigged. And if you, uh, just getting back to the grassroots comment for a second, you even see people like Speaker Paul Ryan, who, who I've lost a great deal of respect for. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got mail from him today. He asked, something you can open your checkbook for that. Morning. He asked me to donate ten thousand four hundred dollars. Oh yeah, right away there, Paulie. Yeah, Paulie checks Betty in the mail. Donuts. Checks in the mail. This guy, uh, he's hedging his bets already to work with the next president, uh, Hillary Clinton, who he thinks he's going to win, who he probably deep down wants to win. Okay, that's it's disgraceful. It, it, it's it's unforgivable. It's deplorable. It's deplorable. And to tell you the truth, I would be donating money in the Ryan race, but it'll be to his opponent in a, in a potential primary when one when one arises. Absolutely. But you know, it's this constant... Uh, we, we, I'm calling it incestuous, and because there's no other way I can really think. The intermingling and the relationships, the political consultants who are married to the journalists that are high up in CNN and MSDNC and, and all the places we, we discuss. MSDNC, I like it. Well, I mean, what else can you describe them as? But we've been saying this for years, and finally, thanks to WikiLeaks, we have proof... Of that. And I'm glad you went back to WikiLeaks because this ties in with the media, it ties in with the email uh, travesty. Gene, let's brief rewind the history. Hillary hit the reset button with which country? That would be Russia. Russia. Hillary Clinton is currently blaming which country for hacking the emails uh, of the DNC that got Debbie Wasserman Schultz in trouble, that got the uh, current acting chairwoman in trouble down in Brazil, and obviously all these John Podesta emails. They're blaming who? Uh, that would be the boogeyman known as Russia. Russia. Okay. Now, when Hillary was uh, testifying before Congress and spoke to the FBI, didn't she tell the American people through various uh, ways that there is no evidence that any foreign governments have any uh, classified information with you know contained in her emails? Well, they have this stuff. Uh, they have this stuff, so I'm pretty sure they got everything else there, uh, Madam Hillary. And, and not for nothing, he... Madam, and I use that term uh, in, in every sense of the word. I'm going to use my Brooklynese again. Not for nothing... If there's nothing to hide, you don't worry about who's hacking you. I mean, isn't this the equivalent of the kid going to the teacher saying he, you know, he tattled on me? Russia, Russia got my stuff. They got my dirty laundry. But if you didn't have the dirty laundry to begin with, what are we talking about? Donna Brazil, basically talking about a leak, leaking out debate questions. The In exact- any other cycle, <laughs> this would be a no-brainer. Can you imagine? If Chris Wallace got caught 
slipping Donald Trump the debate questions before the debate coming up on uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday. Could you imagine? What would happen? A Fox News anchor slipping the questions. Cable channels would be pulling Fox off their their platform. And speaking and wouldn't of be around emails anymore. and covering up and all this crap, didn't Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, resign over a cover-up of some tapes that he recorded himself about something he had nothing to do with? Pretty accurate there. But th- this is how wacky this cycle is. Be- and all because, you know, Hillary Clinton can... Well, think about what we just talked about in the past 15 minutes. <clears throat> Hillary Clinton getting leaked questions from a debate. Hillary Clinton being caught as a national security threat with leaked emails that were hacked from a private server. Hillary Clinton and her campaign inviting over the press to ingratiate themselves with them. Hillary Clinton's campaign being allowed to edit stories for major publications. Yet Donald Trump says something nasty about women, and that's what the media coverage is all about. What kind of world are we living in right now? And a rich man was a womanizer. Um, I'm shocked. A, a, a guy talking to another guy in a private conversation about his sexual conquests? That never happened. And um, uh, go back for a second, because you mentioned national security in the email. And by the way, we haven't even talked about the timing of that whole Trump thing. That they held it for the exact yeah. Right moment. Yeah, and that was another orchestrated event. By and, the who, and who owned that tape? A media company. Go back to national security for a second, since you touched on that, Gene. Sure. Dummy Joe Biden, also known as our vice president, is talking basically about, and you want to say that, you know, Hillary Clinton's emails and her being hacked and using a private server had no effect on national security. That's what she wants to, us to believe. But dummy Joe Biden is hinting that we are going to cyber attack the Russian government. An act of war, which we've said cyber attacks. We have a, a in the Department of Defense, we have a whole wing dedicated to cyber warfare. He's threatening the Russians with cyber warfare. And yet this is no big deal, this email hacking, and, and there's no threat to national security with, with all the emails that she held on her private server? Was he threatening the Russians, or was he foreshadowing the news that also happened earlier this week of Julian Assange from from WikiLeaks being cut off from the Internet? Which attack was he possibly talking about? I, I don't know necessarily if he was talking about Russia, if he was talking about shutting down WikiLeaks or attempting to. I'm pretty sure Biden, and uh, he, he has these moments where he's brutally honest. You leave Uncle Joe alone. Dummy. You leave Uncle Joe alone. You know I, mean? I don't know if he's drunk. I don't know if the hair plugs are too tight. I don't know if the fake teeth are uh, you know messing with his brain, brain waves. But the guy threatened to cyber attack the Russians. He might have been hinting at something else, but he said the Russians. Do you know how easily he could have been winning this race if he chose to run? He's got to be kicking himself right now. Anybody, you're right. I mean, cause say what you want about Joe Biden. He hasn't been scandal ridden the way that that Hillary has been, or the you know the Clinton uh, the Clinton Foundation mafia that that they've turned into. And this is why the, the Clinton the Clinton had, crime family, the Clinton, the Clinton crime family. This is why the conversation we had before we we went on air. You know, I believe that Trump has to go with issues, and we're going to talk about a couple of those issues later on the show. But he's got to go with some issues. I mean, the de- the defensive posture that he's taken throughout his whole life, I would argue, has got to stop. We only have a couple of weeks left before the election. We only have one debate left. He's got to quickly defend. Possibly one debate left. We don't know if there's going to be another debate. Isn't it amazing that the Fox News debate is the one that the Democrats don't want to do? Isn't it amazing that And Hillary Clinton has been in hiding or dead. Yeah, where is Hillary lately? Have you seen her? More importantly, Gene... We are on the Mitch McConnell watch still here oh. at uh, behind an. Oh, even two two weeks after the last show, he's we're on this for like a month Where now. Is Mitch McConnell? Is that man alive? You know, we gotta get we gotta get some music. We gotta, where in the world is Mitch McConnell? Do we have a Republican leader of the Senate? Like, I don't know where this man is. I I haven't heard peep from him. What's going on? Well, I appreciate the way that you asked the, you asked the question by answering my question, but where is Hillary Clinton right now? She's she's taking a break. Maybe she, yeah, break my ass. I think that she's hanging out with uh, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, talking about well, how they're gonna uh, put in the Supreme Court picks for Hillary. Well, Clinton. Uh, 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 see, see, this is this is why we re- we record everything we say because it seemed. Check this out. Huffington Post, while we were on hiatus, publishes an article. Mitch McConnell, where are you at? Are you kidding? I am not kidding you. That's amazing. It's a story written on October 11th while we were away. Where is this? Place? I was overseas. You were doing whatever you were you were doing, uh, and they were talking about Mitch McConnell. Where are you at? The GOP leader endorsed Donald Trump months ago, but he won't talk about it. Uh, 
With one month to go until the election, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has no thoughts on his party's presidential nominee, whom he endorsed months ago. They apparently have a quote from him, so they know where he is. But they're saying that, you know, McConnell, who's hoping nobody notices he's disappeared in the midst of a presidential election, a la Homer Simpson going back into the bush that we all see online, uh, ever since he endorsed Trump, he's nowhere to be found. Well, I heard he was worried because there's a rumor that TMZ actually has a... Uh, a hot mic moment with Mitch McConnell talking about grabbing women's hand wallets back in the uh, late 90s. Oh, grabbing corsets and petticoats, I bet. <laughs> yes. By the, way, by the way, Jennifer Bendery, who wrote that article, just admit that you listen to the show. It's okay. We, you're allowed to. It, That's it, terrific, fine. though, that somebody else is picking that up. Yeah, absolutely. Bravo. I, mean, I don't care who gets the credit. Even if it I'm, is HuffPost. I'm sincerely concerned uh, about uh, the well-being of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Um, if anybody, again, knows where he is, what he's doing... Has anyone seen him? Contact behind Emmy Lines Radio. Let us know. You know, when, when we're broadcasting the show live Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on, on Spreaker, uh, we have a chat room going. And uh, one of the comments in the chat room said they found two crypts in the Great Pyramid, so try there. <laughs> That's a pretty good comment. Uh, listen, folks, we're going to be back after a few brief words. And when we come back, we're going to get a little more substantive. We're going to talk about uh, Donald Trump's latest remarks about a pledge that he's making if and when he becomes president. And let your heart not be troubled if I could steal that line from another competitive radio let host. Freedom ring. We're going to get you pumped for the last couple of weeks here of the election with a little bit of an old school behind enemy lines, Brooklyn GOP radio stuff that we've done back in the day. A little tradition. A little tradition that we do. And we want to get you ready and fired up for this cycle. Gene and Russ, behind enemy lines, we'll be back right after these brief words. If you're a long-time listener of the show, or maybe this is your first time listening, you can probably tell that me and the gang here, we like to have our share of fun, whether it's on or off the air. We talk about two-drink minimum radio and no medication Wednesdays or whatever day it may be. That's why when we found the people at Less Government More Fun, we knew it was a match made in heaven with this show. Folks, we live in a time where government is out of hand. Our founding fathers did not intend government to be all-consuming in all parts of our lives. That's why... We are telling you to go to lessgovmorefun.com, check out the website, check out the swag. What the people want is less government, more fun. Pass it on, make it happen. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F face drooping. A arm weakness. S speech difficulty. T time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F face drooping. A arm weakness. S speech difficulty. T time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn FAST, the sudden signs of a stroke, then pass it on because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Behind enemy lines. Back on the air. Gene and Russ, back behind enemy lines. And, folks, it's a bit of a tradition here on the show to whenever uh, election time comes around. And, you know, Russ and I are, you know, OG campaigners from back in the day here in the People's Republic of New York. As a tradition, we would always play this one clip from the uh, Versus uh, Sports Channel. And, you know, full credit goes to them for this clip uh, that we found on YouTube. We play it for our volunteers. We play it for ourselves just to get ourselves pumped. And given this cycle, it seems appropriate that you listen to the words of this, really internalize it, and understand that no matter what they say out there in the media and polls, whatever, the game starts on Election Day. Here's the thing that makes life so interesting. The theory of evolution claims only the strong shall survive. Maybe so. Maybe so. But the theory of competition says just because they're the strong doesn't mean they can't get their asses kicked. That's right. See, what every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. 
The odds may be stacked against you. Fair enough. But what the odds don't know is this isn't a math test. This is a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a funny way of trumping logic. So before you step up to the starting line, before the whistle blows and the clock starts ticking, just remember out here, the results don't always add up. No matter what the stats may say, and the experts may think, and the commentators may have predicted, when the race is on, all bets are off. Don't be surprised if somebody decides to flip the script and take a pass on yelling uncle. And then suddenly, as the old saying goes, we got ourselves a game. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Game starts on election day, Russ. Forget about all the polls and everything and everyone trying to say on paper who's what and where they are. We got ourselves a game on election day. Everybody's got to get ready for that game. Bring it. Bring it on. By the way, tonight's show is brought to us by which alcohol? Oh, we, listen, I, I just got back from Seoul, South Korea, so I got us a nice bottle of soju. And it's written in Korean, so I assume the spelling is S O J. No, 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 no. See the lettering on the box? Read the lettering on the box. Can't read the lettering on the box, can you? Cannot. Because it's not in English, is it? Hebrew. No, soju. S O O J U. Stop it. You're being, you're perpetuating the stereotype that, that one of us here is anti-Semitic and so, we're not. Stop it. I, uh, I don't Listen, we're having some fun. Large Hasidic community we're having fault. some fun. I'm talking over Russ Gallo because I don't want to talk about this anymore. Oh, jeez. Have, we're having some fun Shit on the air. Topics. That's so Because we're going old school and we're going back to the we got ourselves a game thing. Got it. And little, you know, little did I know that we would be playing that on show number 100 here, Speaking by the way. Speaking of soju, I heard if you mix it with purple drink, that's the way to go. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wish we could, uh, but you know what? Okay, back on topic. Right, let's the, get back in. Where did we? Where did we go wrong here? Where it's off I go the rails wrong? already. We're off the rails already, and we're not talking we're about not Rick Robinson's show it. on Red Nation Rising Radio. Uh, listen, the the things we've been talking about besides getting pumped for the election. By the way, I love that tradition that we do every year. I love it. Uh, but let's let's talk about what Trump is doing to get himself into the game. Because listen, even the most optimistic of us has to say Donald Trump is fighting from behind right now. He's fighting from behind. It's definitely, definitely, he's got to make a comeback here. He's got to make a comeback. So part uh, of that is adopting some of Ted Cruz's language. Talking about, you know, the swamp, draining the swamp in Washington. And, uh, trying to get that whole idea of the Washington cartel back into, into focus with voters to bring those conservatives on board because he's going to need them. Well, he's the outsider candidate and he needs to go back to that, uh, methodology. Um, and the clip that you found for us that, set up the clip that we're you found. We're going to play in a second. You know, one of the issues with Donald Trump, and it, it's partially because he's a, he's a first-time candidate, is we, we speak about it all the time, the curse of knowledge. Trump, early on in the campaign in the primaries, laid out terrific platforms. Immigration, can't beat him on it. I mean, you can't beat him. The American people want a wall. They want illegal immigration to stop. They want murderers and rapists, drug dealers, gun runners, all these people to stop coming to our country. Cannot beat him. They want sanctuary cities stop. Can't beat him on that. They want the, the S bombed out of ISIS. Can't beat them on that. They want, uh, uh, you know, countries that we free and waste our blood and treasure on to pay us back. And in the Middle East, that comes in the form of oil. You can't beat them on that. But where the curse of knowledge comes in is he said all this early on. And as we got later into the campaign and into the general election, he started going on the defensive and defending every attack thrown his way. And the Clintons are masters at this and the Democrats are masters at this. They accuse you of being racist. Remember they said the whole David Duke thing. It's amazing how Donald Trump wasn't racist until he started running for office. He fell in, he was at Hillary Clinton's, oh, he was at Chelsea Clinton's wedding for God's sake, or the other way around. The Clintons went to his daughter's wedding. He got a, he was, he got an award with, with Rosa Parks getting the same award on the same night. It's unbelievable and he fell into all these traps. So what he needs to do is break out of the curse of knowledge. Americans are idiots for the most part. I, God help, help me, I love Americans, but you're idiots for the most part. I mean, we all know it. You're still watching Kaepernick and the football games, and I get it. You're idiots. But there's a general election going on. We're going to pick the president soon. And most American idiots that vote, including the dead ones on the Democratic side, are just starting to pay attention to what's going on. And they're just starting to hear what Trump stands for. And what have they been tuning into for the past few weeks? Donald Trump groping women. Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump this, Donald Trump that. 
Yeah, Donald Trump wasn't a uh, a sex offender until he started running for office either, right? So he needs to get back on script, back on message, and lay out his platform. And what American is people. the message? Well, he, he he has to go back to the old ones, but he came up with a new one. But it's, it An runs with that theme that you were saying, coming back around of the oldie outsider. Oldie but goodie, draining the swamp, the outsider, not a Washington insider. And this is a this was a shot across the bow, believe it or not, I believe, of Paul Ryan and the rest of the Republican establishment who refused to stay on board with the Trump train. And he's talking about cutting down their job with term limits. But there's another major announcement I'm going to make today as part of our pledge to drain the swamp. If I'm elected president, I will push for a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. They've been talking about that for years. Decades of failure in Washington and decades of special interest dealing must and will come to an end. And remember, by the time this ends, I will have spent over a hundred million dollars on my campaign. Hillary spent nothing. She gets all her money from the special interests and donors. And my interest is you. My interest is you. So there you go. Donald Trump getting back on message. Term limits. My message is you, not the special interests. Time to drain the swamp. They've been talking about it for years. They haven't done it. Congress has a 4% approval rating. Drain the swamp. Now, I know that you have a difference of opinion on this. I, I do when it comes to term limits specifically. I, I Listen, I believe in draining the swamp. I believe in being an outsider and not being part of the Washington monolith or the cartel, as Ted Cruz likes to call it. But when it comes to term limits, I'm sorry, I got to break, break company. Because, a couple of reasons. For reason number one, the ultimate term limit is mobilizing voters to vote the bum out. It doesn't happen. I know it's an idealistic point of view, but that's the way things are intended to be. And the way to get eggs is to wait for the Easter money every year. I mean, what do you want to do? Okay. Reason number two Good. is you create a revolving door for your Washington cartel to just put in people and rotate them around and play musical chairs. Nothing changes when it comes to term limits. You still get the same idiots with the same policies as the predecessor. Because all they do is they groom them from their staff, they groom them from the party machine, they put the party money behind them, and it is less likely for an insurgent to get in. Because no matter what, you're still going to have the weight of incumbency just directed towards another person. It doesn't change anything to say you can only be here three, four terms, and then have the guy who was running the office be there for three or four terms. So that, And while he's there for three or four terms, grooming the next guy who's running the office and perpetuating that culture to be there for three or four terms. Yes and no, Gene. Um, so there's lots of different arguments that you can make here. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of them. One of them, I mean, first and foremost, and I kind of alluded to this earlier when I said Americans are idiots, is you know, a, a healthy democracy requires an informed populace. Americans are just not yeah, informed. strike one. So okay. strike one. We don't have an informed populace. They, they don't make informed decisions when they go to the voting booth. So there's strike one. But more so on a conservative point of view. And by the way, we're talking about amending the Constitution here. Not an executive order, none of that crap. Uh, Trump is talking about it's a heavy lift. trying to amend the Constitution. Heavy lift, because um, there's only two ways to do it. One one of which includes Congress, and you're not going to get them to vote for term. And limits. the other which includes two thirds, three quarters of three the quarters states? Three quarters of the states. And, you know, that's... We have a lot of Republicans there. It's possible, but obviously an elected congressman in a state, uh, even though we hold the, the majority in the House, is going to uh, sway their state legislatures not to, to approve something like this. So it's a heavy lift. But the argument that, uh, as a conservative, I would make is the way our government has has transformed over the last couple hundred years is that the only way to get legislation passed and the only way to get a, a leadership position is to have seniority. And you have to have a skilled legislator to be able to navigate all the nuances of the way the House of Representatives works and the Senate works to get legislation passed. So when you have all these super senior members of Congress, it makes it easier for those members to get their legislation passed. So my argument is simple. Let's keep churning that butter every every couple of years. Let's get a whole new group of people in there every couple of years. But you're not going to get new people. You'll have less legislation. You'll get new passed. bodies. New bodies. New That's inexperienced not- bodies with different staffs. You're not going to get new ideas, though. It's the same ideas. Ideas, different vehicles. I mean, Bill de Blasio arguably had the same ideas as uh, David Dinkins. But if David Dinkins was around for 24 years, 
Who knows where the city would be at this point? Because he got voted out. He didn't get term limited out. Correct. Rudy Giuliani got term limited out. We got Mayor Bloomberg. Right. So Mayor now, Bloomberg eventually got term limited out. Right. Now, there is an argument for term limits on the executive, and we already have that. I think the science has settled on executives, and I think you can't really point to an executive being the same as a legislative body. I, I, they're two different things. I, I have to disagree. I just think that the, the founding fathers did not intend for lifelong uh, legislate, le, legislative. They orders. also didn't intend for voters to vote for a U.S. senator. But we do it. Correct. And the only reason why we do it is a, 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 a an idiotic amendment to the Constitution that, that caused that debacle. Well, it got it The got 17th passed. Amendment. And, you know, uh, true conservatives and most libertarians want to repeal that because that's just asinine. I don't really understand how, uh, you know, Congress was set up specifically to allow for the state governments to have a say in the federal government. And that was done by state legislatures under the original Constitution of appointing senators to the Senate. Now, with direct election of senators, they're basically just super congressmen. And, and uh, the states have no representation. And they didn't uh, they didn't foresee uh, the unintended consequences, which is or are when when you when the president nominates Supreme Court justice, which body confirms? The US Senate. The US Senate. So the states have zero input, zero into who will sit on the Supreme Court for life currently. Zero input. The power to give up willingly, unfortunately, but I, I and I tend to agree with you with that. Listen, folks, we're a little bit past halftime here on the show. You're listening to Behind Enemy Lines. I'm Gene. He's Russ. And while we got you listening to the show, check us out at www.behindenemyLinesRadio.us. Check us out on the Facebooks and the Twitters at bel underscore radio. And if you miss any part of the show when we broadcast live Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on Spreaker, you could check us out at any one of our rebroadcast outlets, including WJHC 107.5 FM and in Jasper, Florida, and WDDQ 92.1 in Adele, Georgia, both of which are a part of the Red Nation Rising radio network. You can check that out online as well at rednationrising.us. Also, check us out at KLRN Radio, High Plains Talk Radio and Sackheads Media, ICRN, the Internet's conservative radio network, and Lanterns Radio. And then, even then, if you miss us on any one of the rebroadcasts from any of those great outlets, you can check us out on demand anytime at iTunes, Spreaker, TuneIn, Stitcher, PodBay, Player FM, Discover us on Google Play Music, and check us out on iHeartRadio and SoundCloud. Wow, Russ. That was a mouthful. Yeah, I, well, I could have made a very crude joke then, but I'm not Donald Trump. Back to the discussion, though, about the term limits real quick. Which someone had a very pithy uh, blog post uh, sort of touching on this topic over on BehindEnemyLinesRadio.us, one Russ Gallo. And the title of that piece is A, a Government of uh, Laws, Not of Men. Yeah, I don't read that guy's stuff. Uh, great little piece. It's roughly uh, eight sentences long. If you've got a chance, go by, check it out. It's a it miracle out. that he strung those sentences together, folks, as you can tell. No, but it's a great story talking about uh, Democrats and their iconography, really, when you think about it. Using taxpayer money to put their own pictures on government buildings, uh, which which I cannot imagine. Oh, that's a pet peeve of mine so much. Why does the Assemblyman from the... 47th district need to have his name on his office. His name and his picture on his office uh, nowadays in New York City. You drive by any councilman or assemblyman, they have their name and picture on their office, paid for without tax dollars, and a uh, great piece on, on Beyond the Milan Radio dot US. Check if he does say so himself. If I do say so myself. It, it, it was great and uh, Full surprise check, worthy. Check it out. It's, it, it's The good thing about Russ's writing is it hits you quick and it gets you thinking. Kind of like what we do here on the show. We hit you kind of quick and then we get you thinking. It's like the soju. Got me thinking already. Got you thinking already. Uh, so listen, uh, what do you say we take our last break? And when we come back, we'll, we'll round things out here with, uh, well, who knows? <laughs> I have no, the format, we were, we're off the format. I we're mean, spinning the wheel. We, we're just gonna spin the, yeah. We gotta get that sound effect again. This is the wheel spin <laughs> and what we're gonna talk about. Well listen, enjoy this little musical interlude when, and then we'll be back and with. Be careful you're not buying something. Hillary Clinton's bus, if you know what I mean. Oh yes, we'll talk about that when we come back after this quick little ditty. If you want to rob a bank or run a red light, then there's something you should do first that'll make it all right. You can break any law without any oversight if you change your last name to Clinton. You can lie to the feds or just act like a jerk. Make a crap ton of money without doing any work. Plus, you can sleep with your staff as an added perk if you change your last name to Clinton. The SEC, the FBI, 
The House of Representatives, they just don't apply. You can have all of your enemies mysteriously die if you change your last name to Clinton. Sell special favors to the communist Chinese. Charge a hundred million for some speaking fees. Tell that sexy intern to get down on her knees. You can do it if your last name is Clinton. Collect lots of cash through your private foundation. Store top secret info in an unsecure location. And somehow secure the Democratic nomination. You can do it if your last name is Clinton. Nothing to it if your last name is Clinton. Oh, it's against the law? Screw it. Your last name is Clinton. And that song means more now today than it did when we played it two weeks ago, Russ. Gene Russ, back behind enemy lines. And, uh... Is it true that you played, uh, backup vocals for that? Uh, there were no backup vocals on that, Russ. It was one guy singing. So, yes, it was me. So that was you singing in here just now? That was, yes, that was me singing okay. in here. Oh, the mic wasn't on, was it? Oh, I hope not. I hope it's not. We may have to re- kind of replay that thing. Anyway, listen... I don't know if you know this, well, but... Well, uh, on that I have to ask you again to put your pants on. But all right, we'll, we'll <laughs> let that one go. I listen. My house, that. my house, my rules. <laughs> listen, uh, speaking of pulling up your pants, Hillary Clinton's bus needs to pull up its pants, doesn't it? She is so full of excrement. And so is her bus, apparently. That it's leaking out of the back of her bus, according to news reports. According to recent reports, Hillary Clinton's bus is riding around Atlanta dropping presents for every young little girl and boy on the street there. And I mean, what's the story with that? I don't even understand how that's possible. What, why is it leaking out of the back of her bus? Um, well, Russ... That can't be good for the environment. When, when you're so packed and full of something, eventually it, when you become overloaded, it's got to come out somewhere. Just so happens she packed it all on the bus. Where is Hillary Clinton and Mitch McConnell? Oh, really? I, I, have to go over. I really am <laughs> Where nervous. Where in the world I'm is... I'm real nervous. I don't understand. There's nothing to be nervous about. I mean, listen. Mitch is... He'll be all right. I'm sure he'll be all right. But... By know, the way, Gene... Yes. ...wanted to give a hat tip to the North Carolina Democratic Party. Yeah, Gene. Well, I think we should. Uh, you know, th- this crazy cycle has... Uh, is starting to degrade into violence. Go ahead. It's starting to degrade into violence. Starting... I think the John Podesta emails and the, the Project Veritas stuff show And that. the incitement of... Yeah, well, this is what I'm about. If you let me make my point... I'm I sorry. Can. Go ahead. Uh, so, as we've heard in the news recently, a North Carolina Republican office was firebombed. And Nazi, written on the uh, yes. walls, spray-painted on her. Absolutely. Thanks for letting me get to it again. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> Listen, I don't like being called a Nazi. It's all so. right. No, but he... And uh, the Democratic Party in that area actually uh, did a uh, crowdsourcing uh, fundraiser and raised five figures, I think it was around $12,000, to help with repairs and uh, damages. And in North Kakalaki, that's a lot of money. It, it, two for one, pretty much. Uh, but, again, would, while that's gr- all well and good that the party did that, and I would hope that if the table were turned, we would do the same. We don't do things like think that. About, but think about, that's what I'm about to get to, think about the culture of political incitement that the Democrats have perpetuated, starting with Donald Trump rallies and violence breaking out there, and now word coming out that that violence was incited by paid agitators. Orchestrated, 100%. And now, you know, other people taking the uh, the cue and committing real violent crimes. So while we tip our hat to the North Carolina Democratic Party for doing the right thing, we also have to shame the, Republic- the Democratic Party in general for, and especially the Hillary Clinton campaign, for really perpetuating the the absolute wrong thing. It's scary. Downright scary out there if you're working in politics. And your your average run of the mill everyday Democrat that's out there. They're useful idiots. I mean when it comes down to it. They're swayed by nonsense. Uh they believe everything they see on television. And uh you know Republicans being called Nazis is not far fetched for them. They believe it. Donald Trump is a racist. They believe it. Republican Party are racist. They believe it. Meanwhile, we did a whole show about how Hillary Clinton called them what? Super predators? Uh, that need to be brought to heel. That brought to heel. Talking about Like blacks. a dog. Um, so, I, I mean, useful idiots, I can't think of anybody else who fits the definition better than and the, your average run-of-the-mill Democrat that's blindly voting for Hillary Clinton. In, in, in man-on-the-street interview after man-on-the-street interview from various sources, when Hillary Clinton supporters are asked to identify a single accomplishment of Hillary Clinton... None can be remembered. You know, and, and back to the story about the crap coming out of Hillary Clinton's mouth. I mean, bus. Apparently, uh, they were dumping into a storm drain. Not just not just coming out on the street, but it was actually you know human waste being dumped into a storm drain in Georgia. 
I Mike, can't imagine that. That's legal. Yeah, that definitely is not legal. I mean, if you think about your uh, your wastewater treatment and all the things that if you start mixing human waste into stuff that's going to get treated and recycled, but they got to get rid of it. Gene, she's ill. Let's be for real. She's ill. Oh, she's definitely ill. I, in the head. I mean, we, besides the head, she's physically incapable of the job. Well, I mean, why look, can't this be reported? Why can't uh, uh, in a debate? I, I don't why think is it such a why is it a secret? question? Why can't we see her, her medical records? Why can't we see them? There's real doubts here. You talk about Donald Trump's tax records, and that gained no traction, and he defended it for weeks for some reason. Why can't we see Hillary Clinton's health records? I mean, it's astonishing to me that we got a woman running for president who's near 90 years old. I know Jean's going to correct me, but I don't care. She looks 90. 70. Falling down, stumbling, uh, convulsing during the debate. I don't know what that shoulder shrug thing she was doing was. There's having, something wrong with the Having woman. flies land on her forehead and not even flies wiping it. Flies landing on the forehead... I mean, I'm with Trump on this one. I want to see a drug test before this debate. Let both candidates get drug tested before the debate. Because she's on something. Well, as we all know, the debates are governed by the unified rules of the WBA, WBC, and the IBF. So I don't know if there's any uh, anti-doping uh, testing that is uh, done with that. But, uh, you know, it's like boxing. You, you want to see the fight. You don't want to see uh, technicality win or loss. Come on. I might have to Lance Armstrong, for God's sake. A yeah. man who put the French to shame. A hero. I want to see Hillary a Clinton hero. through the same... The man had one testicle, didn't he? Yeah, and then he had, we was, he was, he had all kinds of drugs in the system. Okay. Had he every tried to ride a strip. bicycle for 20 miles with one testicle. I don't even know where we're going with this one. Know, we went off the wow. That's yeah. the soju. Okay, oh. soju's talking again. Uh, folks, I, I think what we need to... T- let's, let's talk about what we need to take out of this entire discussion. Obviously, more so than any other cycle I can remember working in politics. Politics is nuts. Politics is bots. It's crazy. And while we're saying buckle in for the ride, get excited about it as well. Think about, we're we're the greatest republic in the world. And we're going to be going through a peaceful transfer of power. Millions upon millions are going to hit the polls and are going to cast their vote. Your vote can cancel out Hillary Clinton's vote. Someone else's vote can cancel out Donald Trump's vote. It's the beauty of the system. If we all focus on that for a little bit, maybe this is my final thought, maybe not, I don't know, but we focus on how great that process is, how it's the greatest in the world, how we are the greatest in the world, to think that, A, this is the two best we can come up with, and B, that the process has been degraded so much to the point where we're having fire bombings and and violence in the streets. Come on. Get excited about your election, but don't get... Nuts like this. Get excited, but be afraid. Russ, how many people have you lost as a friend since this election cycle started? The, tons. How many times have you been at a bar and tried to even bring up the conversation of uh, the election and, and just been either disgusted or into a heated argument? It's just insane what's going on right now. But what do you do, Gene, the day after election day when you wake up and realize that Hillary Clinton is the next president of the United States? Well, that's what the soju is for. And God forbid... And this is a, a democratic tactic, I believe. They pick the worst possible choice for vice president to be their running mate. Worst possible. Oh, is this a theory that if you pick the worst possible choice for vice president, it'll keep the president alive? Absolutely. I mean, I... I will, love this theory, by the way. I will donate money to Hillary Clinton's doctors to keep her alive if she somehow wins this election, which will be a tough, uh, you know, a heavy lift to begin with. But can you imagine if Tim Kaine... The, I- the, the eyebrow... If Tim Kaine took the helm, if Joe Biden took the helm, if Al Gore took the helm, look at these characters that I'm naming right now who were this close. Yeah. You're talking about the Republican side. The only one I can really throw out there that was, uh, you know, uh, controversial is Sarah Palin. Yeah. But when you talk about the Dick Cheney's of the world, the, uh, you know, George Bush under Ronald Reagan, Dan Quayle's of the world, Dan Quayle, who was, uh, you know, unfairly tarred and yes. feathered. Yes. Back in the day for a comment he made, which was 100% right. And could you imagine if the internet was around for Dan Quayle? Yeah, I mean, Saturday Night Live used to kill him every week. Absolutely. But can you imagine? Well, you know what? I I can, but I don't think I'm going to have to, because I'm going to go out on a limb right now. I'm pulling a Russ Gallo. I'm predicting right now. Uh-oh. The polls are wrong. I, I truly feel the polls are wrong. When it comes down to the brass tacks, I mean, when, when you have polls showing Evan McMullen one point behind Donald Trump in in a state... Come on. The polls are wrong. Okay? 
What? I that feel, was an interesting one. And the other one is uh, this guy Gary Johnson has like thirty percent in uh, where is it? in New Mexico, Mexico in his home state. I mean, that's astonishing as yeah, well. Yeah, come on, Southwest. What are you doing? But I'm predicting right now it's going to be a squeaker. But I think we're not going to get a president on election day. I think the numbers are going to be so wacky. Interesting. That we're going to end up in a dead heat. Interesting theory. Uh, I, I, I've been looking at the numbers. I, I believe that Donald Trump has some work to do. Uh, and I think it's going to come down to Colorado. I think Colorado is the key in all this. There is a more than a likely chance that if Trump wins Florida, Trump wins Ohio, and uh, uh, Trump wins, let's say, Maine and a few other states, if he wins Colorado... We're at 269, 269. I think it's... Not, I think it, of all elections that we've participated in in our lives, it may happen. It may happen. I'm going, I'm going on a limb. It's a big limb. So I'm a big guy. It's a thin limb and it's shaking. <laughs> but Great. I, I'm going to go on there right now. And I'm doing it not because I believe in it, but just because, just in case it comes out that way, I want to be the guy that said it. I think if we go in the archives, I also predicted a 269 outcome as possible. Oh, come on, so man. We'll let that one slide. What I'm more worried about, Gene, is this. As everyone knows, I'm the eternal optimist on this show. Yes, of course you are. Even though I always say that we're doomed. And we are doomed as a country. But with that said, if by some chance Donald Trump, God help us that I'm even saying this, because Donald Trump is clearly not the, the best candidate uh, of all the Republicans that ran to be the president. but That's your boy. If my, You go to war with the army you got, not the army you wish you got. You know what I mean? But if by some chance this man does not defeat Hillary Clinton, and we wind up with Hillary Clinton as president, then, then I truly lose all faith and confidence in this great republic that you've just uh, discussed. Because I don't see how it's possible. Uh, there's no, Not many people are happy with the way the country's going, where our national security is a disaster. The Middle East is an utter disaster. The economy is still struggling. Uh, there's millions of people out of the labor force, the workforce that, uh, so our unemployment numbers are skewed and they don't even make sense when you look at them. Obamacare is kicking people off of, of the health care rolls, off the health insurance rolls. The country's a mess. And if Hillary Clinton wins, that's basically saying that somehow the majority of Americans or the plurality of Americans somehow believe that this is the right course that we're on. And for you idiots out there that are sort of in the middle, or even Hillary Clinton supporters, what makes you think that Hillary Clinton in the White House is going to get anything she says passed through a Republican Congress, assuming the Republicans maintain at least a majority in the House of Representatives, which seems pretty likely? But again, folks, let not your heart be troubled, as we, as uh, that other radio show host says. Get excited, get pumped. It's going to be a wild ride the next couple of weeks. And as those weeks peel by, we hope you keep tuning into the show. But for this particular episode, episode number one hundred, by the way. Oh, congrats, Gene! I wanted to yeah, say that. Yeah, same to you, pal. Hundred uh, episodes. Hundred episodes of Behind Enemy Lines. We had just about the same, maybe more, with uh, our previous incarnation at Brooklyn GOP Radio. We've been doing this a while now. And I want to say uh, at least ninety-eight of them should never be played again. Should never. I think that at least two of them we didn't have technical glitches on, if I'm not mistaken. Including this one. So far. We got Fingers crossed. Left. Fingers got crossed. Left. All right, folks, listen. We want to thank you for sticking around with us for a hundred shows. Hope you're sticking around for another hundred. But until that next show, until that next show, time to shut this sucker down. What do you say, Russ? Gene, I want to shut it down. But just real quick. Listen, I, I'm reading on Drudge, and I encourage you guys to visit Drudge Report every day. Just quickly, Gene. I know we've got to shut it down. Oh, don't worry about We shut it down when you say so. Go ahead. Colleges and, uh, you know diversity, all this crap that's going on. I'm not ashamed to be a white male in this country. White men have done great things in this country, okay? And and heterosexual, Christian, white males especially have done great things for this country, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. So I'm tired of uh, uh, the diversity police out there teaching young white men in college cam- on college campuses that somehow being white is racist, somehow being a man is wrong, uh, and somehow having testosterone flowing through your veins is, is somehow a bad thing. It's disgraceful. I'm fed up with it. And, and you men out there need to, to rise up. Enough is enough, really. And if you're going to elect a great grandmother or someone who looks like she could be president, wake the hell up. When, when he said, when they say Trump is winning with men, he should be get a, a hundred percent of the men out there. Are you nuts? All right. That's, I had to put that in there, Jim. I'm sorry. Hey, listen, it's been a long time since I had a gal rant at the end of the show. So now, Mr. Gal, are we ready to shut the sucker down? Shut it down and don't tailgate the Clinton bus. Uh, Yeah, please don't do that. Thanks for listening, everybody. 
Until next week, we are out of here. Good night, folks. Our position has been compromised. It's time to roll out. Report for debriefing at www.behindenemylinesradio.us and look for regular communications via Facebook and Twitter at BEL underscore radio. You are the resistance behind enemy lines. A Rock Radio Production. Copyright 2016. Back in seven days. Out.